10 random magic cards rated day number 62 everybody we are currently in the middle of dust mourn preview season in case you're watching this in the very far future and not aware of that and it's, there's supposed to be cards on the release schedule but we still haven't gotten any today so if you're looking for your looking at magic cards fix you might not get it outside of this today it could be your only hope so let's hope we get some good cards what do we get fiery encore the first card of the day I've never seen this card. It's from Commander 2021. Five mana, four and a red for a sorcery. Discard a card, then draw a card. This better be, this better get a little bit better uh, really fast. Whenever you discard a non-land card this way, Fiery Encore deals damage equal to that card's mana value to target creature or planeswalker. And this card has Storm. It has Storm. Still doesn't seem very good. You know, it's five, it's five mana. A storm card should really be more like you know, Grape Shot or Brain Freeze. You know, cards that cost like two mana. So that you, if you have five mana, you can feasibly cast three spells before them on a turn. This one, like, you know, you cast like four spells before it. And then you have to have five more mana to actually do this. It's kind of lame, I guess. And it only hits creatures and planeswalkers. So you're not going face and actually winning a game. It feels like this was really, really safe. This design, but I don't know. It's neat. It's unique. When you see Storm on a card, I feel like that improves the score by like two and a half points just by itself. Storm's a really, really good ability. Um, and obviously in Casual Commander, which is mostly what we're ranking these cards for, uh, this is a... What, do you have like 15 mana anyway? You know what I mean? <laughs> you Seething Song into Iron Crag Feet or something, you know, something like that. Like it's mana, mana, mana. Bunch of treasure tokens because you're playing Dockside Extortionist. So you just, you just have 12 mana, right? And it's not really that big of a deal. And you just kill the whole board. But you could do that with so much so many fewer steps, <laughs> I guess. But it also lets you rummage. Huh? God, it's five mana. And it has storms. So you have to cast a bunch of other spells. And then you have to discard a card. I don't know. You have to discard a card a bunch. I think it's actually like a 4.6. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm just like hypercritical today because I'm in like you know, spoiler season mode, like this card's not good in standard <laughs> or whatever. It's not usually how I am during spoiler season, but I'm a little bit more critical. I think during spoiler season, maybe that's what's making me be like, this card's awful, <laughs> but I don't know. Let me know how you feel. Am I just missing something? Is this actually a really played card in commander? I don't think so based on the price, but eh, it's not really feeling it. Let's see what the second card of the day is. Cephalid ink shrouder. Only ever printed in Judgment. It's currently 27 cents to own a copy. Three mana, two and a blue for a 2-1 octopus. It's supposed to be a cephalid, but there's no cephalids anymore. Discard a card from your hand. Ink Shrouder can't be the target of spells or abilities and is unblockable this turn. Oh, that's kind of neat, right? You can give him Hexproof for a discard. This is actually better than it looks because it's one of these cards that just allows you to discard any number of cards for free. And that it can typically be better than it looks just because it's a free discard outlet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw this like a 4.74. Something like that. I don't think that it's actually very good. Just a 3 mana 2-1 that goes hexproof. And I guess the unblockability is fine too. But still, I think the actual best mode on this is just discard cards for free. And you can probably do that in better ways. Although I'm not sure you could do it in blue for t in too many better ways, right? If you're just stuck with blue, but you need this effect, I think this might be like one of the only ways of really doing it, but I don't know. Maybe that should bump it up a point. 4.89, like really, really close to five, just because there's not a whole lot of cards let you do that. But we'll move on to Unbreakable Formation. Originally printed in Ravnica Allegiance. Yep. This is three mana, two and a white for an instant. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. It also has addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. Who remembers addendum? It's actually from just a few years ago and I completely forgot about this. Um, actually, an interesting little ability addendum was allowing you to make spells a little bit like better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, altogether though, I don't know how many people cast this for the sorcery speed mode. I think most people just wait to use it at instant speed, but right now there are just better things to do this with like Teferi's protection, but I guess Teferi's protection costs like a lot of money and this costs no money. So that's at least something to point out, you know, all your dudes getting indestructible is always going to be pretty good. <laughs> so I can't rate this like low or anything. I'll give it a 5.4. Nine, yeah. 
5.49 sounds right. It might be slightly better than that, but you know, again, I think they're just better options and you don't have all the slots in the world for this effect in your commander deck. We'll move on to Notion Rain. I like this card. It was originally printed in Guilds of Ravnica. This is three mana, one, a blue, and a black for a sorcery. Surveil two, then draw two cards. Notion Rain deals two damage to you. Um, so like a read the bones kind of effect or sign in blood, right? But you get surveils instead of scries, and that's way better. I'm not going to say like infinitely better, but it's pretty good. So I'll give Notion Rain just a straight five. Um, read the bones effects are probably usually going to be a five. And a sign in blood would be like a 5.7 or something, <laughs> something like that. Just in case we ever get to it, I probably won't remember I said that. But still, Notion Rain, I'd say right at about a 5. This is what you expect a magic card to be. It is pretty much exactly average for this day and age. So 5 makes sense. We'll move on to Rite of Consumption here. Two mana, one on a black for a sorcery. Really only ever printed in Shadow more. And it's 4.29 to buy this card. Um... I've forgotten what you are. I've seen this card before. Two mana, one and a black for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast it, sack a creature. Rite of Consumption deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target player. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. It's a fling. It's a fling that drains. Um, hmm. Let's start a new buy list right here. Buy Rite of Consumption. That's really pretty good. It's like... Makes sense that it's like four bucks. Uh, denote the price here, four dollars for some reason. Um, this is a common, is it not? Yes, it's a common. That's four dollars. Okay. Um, card's good though. Card's really good. Fling effects are sweet. Usually you want them to be instant speed as often as possible, but there's a lot of non-instant speed fling effects that do see play, so it's not that surprising. Just a um, really good, really pretty good card. Obviously situational. And specifically in, in, you know, very certain decks, you know, aristocrats like sacrifice decks, this goes in, but just anything with like a large creature, you know, a large, cheap creature, this could probably do some work in. So pretty sick actually. And I'm going to give it like a 5.9 cause that's a really, really good fling effect. How have I never, like I've seen the card, but how is it didn't stick in my memory? Like at all. It's pretty good, dude. We'll move on to the Necro... Ooh, the Necro Bloom, everybody. Um, this is cool art, but it's also kind of not... I don't know, the, the whole package is a little... Uh, a lot on the eyes. So we'll move on to a card that looks like a magic card. The Necro Bloom is four mana, one, a white, a black, and a green for a 2-7 legendary plant with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 0-1 green plant creature token. If you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token instead. Land cards in your graveyard have dredge two. This card is 31 cents by the Necro Bloom, because I don't believe I have a copy of this card and I was really excited when it first came out but I was looking at like pre-order prices and pre-order prices on this card were very high but now it is slightly higher than one American quarter to buy this card so probably should do it, it looks like a really really fun commander to build around I like Abzan as a color combination I like landfall I like making plants and zombies you see it's a plants versus zombies reference I also love dredge as an ability so the card just does everything I like so I'm probably going to overrate it slightly, but I've seen a lot of reports from people who like love this card in Commander. Like I know multiple other content creators follow people on Twitter and have fans uh, even who have told me, you know, that like they have a Necro Bloom, Necro Bloom deck or like this is going in my Necro Bloom deck or whatever, right? So I'm not the only one out there with love for this card. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order you. I'm going to order the blank out of you, man. Um, I'm going to give this... A 6.6. .6. We'll give it a 6.66. Something like that. This is a, this is a really cool commander, man. It's really cool. It's good. It's a good commander. We'll move on to Edward Jackdaw Captain. <laughs> what? This is four mana. One, a blue, a black, and a red for a 3-3 legendary human pirate. Other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent control by a player who was dealt combat damage. By three or more pirates this turn. Okay, so non-land permanent is a pretty good phrase on this card. What are you? You can get one for 19 cents. You can get another for 60 and another for 44. This was a... Uh, oh, it's Admiral Beckett Brass. I was I know I've read this card, but it wasn't called that. <laughs> What's going on here? Um, 
It's Admiral Beckett Brass, another like unique commander that lets you play an interesting color combination at the very least. In my experience, because uh, I do have a very a tiny amount of experience playing one commander game against this card, um, it seemed really, really difficult to get the, <laughs> you know, combat damage things. Like I knew I'd seen you, um, and I knew I kind of liked you back when the original Ixalan was out, but it didn't really do much in standard. Um, still cool, really cool commander here, especially if you're into pirates and want to do stuff with them. So just for the unique commander factor, I'm going to give this the honorary five of the day. You know, pirate anthem effect is at least cool. And you know, there's a lot of ways pirates are evasive or can go unblockable, or at least they have flying or whatever. Right. So with that in mind, it shouldn't be hard to get to, to make the second ability pop off. But again, I've like seen it be difficult with my own eyes. So <laughs> I'm not too sure about that second ability, but I will give her the honorary five. We'll move on to Primordial Sage, originally printed in Ravnica, City of Guilds. This is six mana, four and two green for a four or five spirit. Whenever you play a creature, you may draw a card. Okay. So whenever you cast a creature, you can draw a card. It's like a beast whisperer, kind of. Costs a little bit more, has more power toughness. Has a may effect instead of making you do it. I think beast whisperer makes you do it. Um... And if Beast Whisperer is good, then this is probably good, right? So this is less to order than a Beast Whisperer, which is currently like three fifty or whatever. Um, I think you can get it on the low end for $2. This can cost you less than $0.50, cents, which I think is a pretty good deal for something like this. So I'm going to give this a 5.6. Um, very, very good text box. Incredible text box. But in this case, it, it does cost a little bit. Costs, you know, 50% more than a card that already does this. So... Right. We'll move on to Sultari Crusader. Only ever printed in Tempest. I get to look at a shadow card. Let's go. This is one of my favorite mechanics of all time. Three mana, two and a white for a 2-1 knight. It's a Sultari knight, as a matter of fact, with shadow. This creature can block or be blocked only by creatures with shadow. You can also pay two mana to pump it by plus one till end of turn. It's uh, it's not a good card. <laughs> it just really kind of isn't a good card, but I just love shadow. It's basically unblockability. So you have a Phantom Warrior here, right? A three mana, two power unblockable creature that in this case can actually pump itself. And having an unblockable creature that can pump does seem tempting. But in today's day and age, I'm just not really sure where it goes, where you play it like, oh, I can tie up all my mana to do a guaranteed five damage to a commander opponent. I don't think that's great. So it's fine. Uh, and was at one point a neat magic card, but never really saw a whole lot of play. I just, I think Shadow's cool. So I'm going to give this... A 4.8. Um, I should give it a lower score than that. But nostalgia, you know, Shadow. Shadow is just it's a good ability, man. We'll move on to Banalish Honor Guard here. Originally printed in Dominaria. It's two mana. One and a white for a 2-2 two, two human knight that gets plus one plus zero for each legendary creature you control. Seems okay. You know, I kind of vaguely remember this from when the original Dominaria came out. That's a set that I really, really like. And yet, this card really didn't establish any foothold, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't necessarily ever since then, but it could be a good little two-drop for your Legendary Commander deck. Although, I assume, you could just play two-drop Legends, and they're always going to be better, right? I think there were Legendary decks back then, and this still didn't really see play, because, like, you want to play Legends. <laughs> legendary deck. So, eh. Um, I'm going to give it a decent score, though. I'm going to throw this a 4.4 um which is probably not what you expected when i said decent score but i'll give it a 4.486 right um because a it can be like a 5-2 really easily but on the other end it doesn't have any keyword abilities it's always going to be too toughness right there's obvious like baked in issues with this card so i can't give it too high of a score but let's look at the last card of the day it's Shalku. Ooh, this is um, on the reserve list. And Shalku is so cool, man. Originally printed and only printed in Mirage. It's about 225 to get this card. That is all the reserve list working, baby. This is uh, seven mana, five and two black for a 5-5 five, five legend with flying. It cannot attack if there is another creature in play. So it probably can't attack. During your upkeep, lose three life. You can tap it and remove a creature from the game. But a plus one, plus one counter on Shalku. So... You could build a commander deck around this, uh, mostly considering it's legendary. It's also a vampire. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, I never really knew it was a vampire. I guess it makes sense that it is. But when I was a kid, which is mostly my experience with this card, 
it didn't really have a creature type. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a legendary creature. Um, and in 1v1s back then, this was actually like one of the finishing moves in like my buddy Ryan's blue black, like kitchen table control deck. Um, later in the game, you get this down and your opponent just can't really do much about it. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's cool there. And it all reminded us of like, you know, Royal assassin and other cards that just tap to kill a creature. Like, oh my goodness. Um, this was a card that was kind of a lesson in why seven mana is nearly unplayable. If you're not ramping though, but back in the day we had dark ritual, whatever. So card wasn't as hard as it seems to get to, but still during your upkeep, lose three life is pretty bad. Most, you know, most of the time you don't want to do that. <laughs> I guess in commander, it's slightly more acceptable, but also in commander, it's going to be incredibly hard to keep the board clear. And if you do keep the board clear, you're rewarded with a medium sized flyer, <laughs> you know, who cares? So this card isn't actually very good, but it is very cool. It's awesome. So I <laughs> give it extra points for that. I want to give this card the honorary five of the day, but I think I already did that. Um, I will ask the audience though, because I haven't used that card yet. Um, what do you think of Shaku Inbringer? What do you give this card score wise? I'm going to go out on a limb and give her a 4.7. And a lot of that is for being a extremely unique commander, which I have said before I like, but I'm not sure the upside is actually as good as it may look. You know, it's tap to exile a creature. Not as good as you think, I think, some of the times. <laughs> but just having a body on the table, even if it loses you three life a turn, just having a body on the table that does that, I don't know, seems beneficial, right? So maybe I'm actually underrating it slightly, um, and it's a little better than I think. But let me know what you think about it. But that said, that is all the cards for Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you had a good time with this. I sure did. I'll see you bright and early to begin your week. Bye.